No. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. And um, or should I say good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are listening in from. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to you guys for inviting me to come out there and share what we do. I appreciate that. And um, today, what I wanted to do is just kind of go over something that we are doing, something that has worked pretty, pretty well um, for us and um, hopefully see whether this would be able to help you guys too as well in, in the way you approach the market. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first, we have to go through our disclaimer, let everybody know, look, this is not licensed financial advice. Uh, we're not licensed financial advisors, so I'm not giving any recommendation to buy, sell, or anything. Um, all I'm doing is simply just sharing what has worked for me. And if you like it, great. Um, if, if it doesn't fit your style, no worries. So one thing we've all learned is that everybody has a style. And so you just have to make sure that, hey, as you listen to all these different presentations, you gravitate towards the one that you believe is going to help you with what you're trying to do, okay? So a little bit about myself. Um, I apologize, I do not have a camera on my workstation here at home. So um, you won't be able to see my handsome face, but nevertheless, a little bit about me. Um, been in the accounting finance field for about 17 years now. I actually studied accounting in college and um, you know, finished college, got involved in real estate, got involved in the stock market. And once I got involved in the stock market, I really just liked that aspect of it. And so the whole finance and investing background was really what I wanted to focus on. And so um, over the last eight years, I've been focusing primarily on technical analysis and quantitative analysis. Now I have to preface that because prior to that, with my accounting background, I was more fundamental analyst, you know, financial statements. I was the guy that could read financial statements. I could still read financial statements. Um, but um, as I started applying it to the stock market, I realized there were other things that moved certain stocks more than just the fundamentals. And so that's what got me into studying qu uh, quantitative and technical analysis, okay? Um, what we specialize in is to focus on good, sound, healthy companies. That's, that's really all we're trying to do. We're not day traders. So if there's anybody on the call that's a day trader, I apologize upfront. What I talk about and what we do would not really necessarily help day traders. So please forgive us for that. However, if you're a swing trader, investor long-term, I think that this is probably one of the best presentations you'll probably hear in a, in a long time. And so um, I look forward to helping those who this method would be able to help. Okay. Um, you heard me mention the word quantitative ana analysis. I'm not sure how many people understand what that means, but I have to go back and talk about this gentleman right here. I'm not sure how many people know who he is. This guy is named Jim Simons. Jim Simons is a quant analyst and uh, um, his work really impacted what I do today. Okay. So like I said, I was in fundamental analysis before financial statements, did all the PE ratios, the whole nine yard current ratios, all that stuff, right? But then I also noticed that there were certain times when stocks moved when the fundamentals didn't make sense. And there were stocks that did not move when the fundamentals made sense. And so that was what prompted me to say, okay, there's gotta be something else moving this market. And, um, you know, when I first started, I didn't know about Jim Simons, but then later on, as I was studying you know, market directions, market moves. I came across this guy's work. Um, now, I say I came across his work, not necessarily that he teaches what he does, but interviews about him, what he does and how he approaches the market. And one of the very first thing that really struck me was that he said the start market is not random. And that for some reason really struck a chord with me because I always believed that there was something moving this market but the question is, what is it, right? And even though I didn't know what it is, just to know that somebody else, someone like Jim Simons had figured out, look, it's not by random. This is not by accident, was very, very uplifting because prior to that, everybody thought, oh, it's a gamble, it's speculation. You don't know what's gonna happen, da, 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 right? Nobody can predict the future, which is true, but what really struck me was when Jim Simon says, look, we only look for patterns of price that are not random, okay? That really just hit me. It's like, wow. So, so to him, he said, look, we'll search through so many historical data. 
but we are only looking for the ones that we know are going to has a repeatable pattern. If it doesn't, we want nothing to do with it. And so when he realized that this was back in 1970s, 1980s, when he figured it out, he hired a lot of physicists and mathematicians and statisticians, and they built this model, right? where he now used that to you know make billions of dollars i mean he's worth about 16 billion dollars now uh but it was interesting to note that he started that back in the 1980s when he did that and i said wow that's pretty cool so to him if you ask jim simons right now fundamental analysis you know his model cares nothing about fundamental analysis but only focuses on repeatable pattern and so he built a model around that and so based on everything that I started hearing him with the, with as much as he would share, because he keeps his, his actual uh, uh, model a secret, so much so that anybody that works for him has to sign this lifetime non-disclosure agreement, okay? Uh, but that's just what Dan Chiman did. But it opened up the channel, the light bulb for me to say, wow, if he can create something and all he's saying is, look, you just have to find the patterns. The only difference was that the computer programming and the algorithms are able to do faster and, and, and analyze a whole lot more data than humans can. But that didn't mean that humans could not analyze and identify certain, certain patterns. And so needless to say, that's what struck me. And I was like, wow, okay, if Jim Simons can do this, let me see if I can go out there and identify certain patterns. And my whole thing was, I just wanted to identify patterns that occurred repeatedly, okay? And it's interesting how there's so many patterns out there that occurs repeatedly, but people are not aware of it. And so I'm gonna do a quick little exercise because I always tell people, I say, look, it's as simple as this. If you, you know, really get how to see certain patterns in the market. I always ask people, I say, how many corners does a stop sign have? And if you guys don't mind, go ahead and check that in there in your chat box, you say, how many corners does a stop sign have? Because I get a lot of people giving me different answers. As, as much as we've seen a stop sign over and over and over, there's a lot of people that still get that wrong, okay? So I see some people saying eight, which is great. Some people say six, you know, and some people actually said five, which is interesting, okay? James, um, that sounds like a Nigerian name, which is very interesting. Uh, your last name sounds like a Nigerian name, James. Um, you know, I'm from Nigeria too, by the way. So that's kind of like why I see that name. Awesome. Okay, so 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 the answer, believe it or not, is eight. It's an octagon, okay? Uh, sometimes I even get people say that there's, it's five corners. Some people think it's a pentagon, but it's not actually, it's an octagon, okay? It's an octagon, so it's eight sides to it, which is very interesting because we see stop signs every single day, right? Excellent, excellent, James. So here is that. All right, that's how many corners they have. And most people know that it is red and white, okay? So then I asked the question, I said, all right, red and white, eight sides. So then I said, how many corners does a yield sign have in America? Because <laughs> I've learned over time, so people say, what country are you talking about? How many corners does a yield sign have? Now, interesting enough, most people get this one right, okay? Which is three. Okay, great, it's three. So then I asked the question, I say, what color is a yield sign? And I'm gonna pause here to see if people can answer that. What color is a yield sign? Mm, the plot thickens, right? So I'm seeing some red, I'm seeing some yellows and black, I'm seeing yellow. The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is the yield sign is red and white, <sighs> right? Like. Wait a second, are you sure, Wally, that this is a red, like yield sign is red, I promise you. Since 19, I wanna say 1972, 1972 was the last time the yield sign was in yellow and black. Okay, so that means all of you guys, I'm gonna make sure I write this down. All you guys that said yellow and black or yellow, um, I'm a, if we ever meet in person, just let me know that you were one of those that's answered the yield sign is yellow and black. And so if I'm driving with you, just go ahead and hand me over your keys because you know the yield sign has not been yellow and black since 1972. Now, I would give some people some slack if they were if they've been driving since 1972, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Urban said that he's, he's, he's colorblind. No problem. Okay, so then that's fine. 
I'm, I appreciate your candor. Um, but at the end of the day, the yield sign has not been yellow and black since 1972. So the question, and I get this a lot, even with the younger kids, you know, the millennials today, they all answer yellow and black. So the question is why? Why is it that something that is so obvious, so in plain sight, it's, it's, it's such, I mean, you can literally leave your office today, leave your home today, leave the grocery store, and, the, and all the all, all the yield sign you'll see going home or going to work or wherever you go is going to be yellow, I mean, white, white and red, red and white. But for some reason, people were not paying attention. So it's there, but we don't really pay attention to it. Well, that's how the stock market is. And that's one of the biggest things that I got from Jim Simons. It's like the patterns are there, but for whatever reason, we either ignore it, we pay too much attention on something else. We don't see certain patterns, which is the genius of what Jim Simon says. Look, I only want to trade the ones that have a repeatable, predictable pattern, okay? So you keep that in mind. I took that little information that he said, and I said, let me go to work and see how I can use this in the stock market. And that's kind of like what I did, all right? And so in 2020, I'm gonna show you this. These are all stocks that we traded, over 90 different stocks, where just by seeing a certain pattern, we bought this and all these stocks, we call this the path to new all-time highs. Basically, all we did was buy stocks when they were low because they had a pattern that they were ready to rally to new highs, okay? And we did over 90 of them. My goal in 2020 was to see if I could trade 20, uh, 60 of them for the year. We ended up doing 90, okay? This year, my goal is to do 100. We're already at about, uh, I want to say 40, 48 of them right now, this year so far that we have done, okay? And the idea is we're not chasing anything. I've heard people talk about GameStop. I've heard people talk about EMC. I've heard talk, people talk about all kinds of stuff out there. But all I simply do is go back and look for that one pattern. Okay. And that's all we've been doing. Okay. And so you see all these stocks for stocks that we traded, our students traded throughout the year 2020. And I say this because, you know, 2020, you got to understand from the beginning, we set this goal in January, 2020. So this is prior to the pandemic actually happening. So we did this before the pandemic, we did this during the pandemic and we did this after the pandemic. So I'm here to say that when those patterns appear, they're just there. Just like the yield sign is there and it's just there. It's not like we did anything extra, we just saw it there, make sense? And so what we end up doing was again, just then taking technical analysis data, quantitative analysis data. If you've never heard of quantitative analysis, I highly encourage you to go take a look at that. Um, you know, it's just really statistics and numbers, okay? That's really all it is. But the idea was that we wanted to identify repeatable patterns, okay? And what we then did was we then took all that information because we started seeing certain things. We wanted to focus on about eight different areas. The first was what pattern shows up that tells us this is a good, healthy company, right? I wanna know that it's a good, healthy company because again, we've seen a lot of pump and dumps out there. So how do you, what tells us that this is a pump and dump company from a good, healthy company? That was one thing we wanted to focus on. Boom, we started seeing those patterns. Then I said, wait a second, how can we tell if the price is at an attractive level? Now, attractive level to us just means that it's, you know, relatively discounted, okay? And so that's one of the things we wanted to do is like, we were not, I really, you know, did not like having to chase stocks in hindsight, right? You hear a lot of people say, oh, this stock has moved up 25% for the month or 50% for the quarter, and then everybody wants to jump into that. My thing was, no, 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 that's too late. By the time we started hearing about that, that's too late. The question is, what was the pattern that told us, wow, this was an attractive price right now that is going to move up 25%, that is going to move up potentially 50% in the future, right? That was the other thing that we started looking for. It's like, it's like any patterns. At first, we didn't even know. We were just saying, that was the question we asked ourselves. What will tell us this is a low enough price where price will start heading higher? The other thing we wanted to know was how do we mitigate our risk? How do we calculate our profit potential, right? Uh, we wanted to know 
is this pattern? How repeatable is it? Can we really, really rely on this? We also wanted to know, is the institutional accumulation taking place? Because that was one of the biggest things that we were so adamant about this. Like we want to make sure that institutions are behind it, right? And then again, you know, is price relatively discounted and the expected move. So so if if you if you take these first letters here, okay, it spells the word harp. And I just throw this out there. Uh, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, and all that stuff. And 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 one of the, the there's a good story in the Bible that talks about a king named King Saul, who used to be tormented by an evil spirit, right? And there was a, a boy named David. And every time that that evil spirit came to torment to King Saul, David would play the harp, right? And every time he played the harp, it would calm Saul down. And when I started thinking about it, I said, wow, this is so cool that the H-A-R-P, the things that we wanted to focus on, end up coming out to be the word harp, right? Like the instrument, the, the musical instrument, harp. And I tell people, I said, if you understand this, you know, like I feel like the market torments people every single day. And we have been able to calm the craziness, volatility. That we don't care about any of that stuff anymore by making sure we see stocks that follow this model right here, this heart model. So change the way we approach the market like tremendously. And then if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see this right here, R-I-P-E, okay? And, and, and what that spells is ripe. And the reason why this is important to me is because you know, it's one of those things where we see certain patterns, like say a double bottom pattern or a head and shoulders pattern or something like that, right? We see it all the time or, you know, we've heard people talk about it. But the question I had, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have is, when do we start buying? Okay, how do we know this double bottom would not work? How do we know this is the time to buy this double bottom? How do we know we've already too late to get into it and all that kind of stuff? Or are we too early? Did we buy too early and all that kind of stuff? And so when I started looking for, I said, I want to see those repeatable patterns. Where's the institution that can be? It's price, you know, discount. And I said, wow, it kind of comes up with the word right. And so one of the things we always try to do is we call this now the ripe model, meaning that we want the stock to be ripe, just like any fruit that you eat, right? You know, we can see a mango tree and we can see bearing fruits, but if it's just bearing fruit, if today was the first day it bore fruits, it's probably going to be a green, solid green mango that is not edible. Okay, that's because it's not right. But if you give it enough time, what ends up happening is what? It gets ripe. And that's the same thing we saw with stocks. It's like, look, not all double bottoms are created equal. Not all head and shoulders are created equal. But the difference is there are certain repeatable patterns that start showing up. And when they start showing up, it makes the stock ripe. Boom, the stock is ready to go. And so that's literally what we end up seeing. And when I started seeing that, I was like, wow, let me see how I can put this together uh, in a more structured format and then let algorithms help me do the work. And that's pretty much what we did. Okay. So we have a platform that I'm going to show you pretty soon that puts all this stuff, those eight models all into this platform. Uh, one of the first things I want to know, are we on the right side? And Part of all the stuff that we figured out that shows the patterns, the repeatable patterns, everything, the quantitative analysis, technical analysis, you merge them all together. And one of the first things we know is like, look, I know that we are on the right side, which is the reason why we call our company right side trading, right? Not only because we want to be on the right side, but also when you analyze a chart, everybody can say anything in hindsight. The question is when we see something here, what is it going to do to the right side of that chart, right? But we always ask ourselves this question, are we on the right side of this instrument, of this stock? And so the way we can easily see that is, look, when we have a green column like we have here, this green column here, we know that the market sentiment is bullish, pure and simple. I don't want to know what the news says. It doesn't matter. If I see that the green section here is what we're dealing with, then I know the market is bullish. If I'm seeing a red, like I see here, I said the market sentiment is bearish. It's just as simple as that. So if I know that the market sentiment is bearish, whatever that time frame is on, then the question becomes, hey, do I wanna be long or do I wanna be short? And obviously, hopefully we all say we wanna be short in this case. So that's one of the first things, very short, repeatable, boom. The next thing we say, look, 
how do we know we're dealing with healthy stocks? Remember what I said it was like, I wanted to know we're dealing with healthy stocks. And one of the things that we now have is something that we call a harp line, which is this right here. Okay, our harp line helps us to determine whether or not a stock is healthy and it's gonna be continuing this trend or it's not. And all we simply look for is that we wanna see that the, the harp line is trending higher. That's, that's really all it comes down to. We wanna see that it's trending higher and then we're able to get into it, okay? What about discounted low price? We figured out that, look, if we put on the harp line and we can get in a healthy stock at the lower section of this harp line, when the column in the back turns green, meaning that the sentiment just turned bullish, we see that this is a relatively uh, a healthy stock that is ready to go higher. And we can get in somewhere between the lowest section of this harp line we know that, wow, price is relatively discounted. The next thing, I get this a lot. Hey, you're already in a trade. It's working out. When do you get out? When do you place your stops? When do you exit the trade? And one of the things that we've also done with this whole thing is to make sure that, look, as each candle comes, we're like, let's say we're looking at a daily chart. As each day passes by, we want to make sure how is all this helping? How is all this doing? If uh, if it gets to the point where it's like, hey, momentum is slowing down, um, that's beginning to show signs of reversals, all that kind of stuff, we want this whole right model to tell us something. And by the way, you will notice this whole section right here, this right model, right? One of the biggest things we did was we said, look, I wanted to create this where not only myself could use this, but my kids. I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. And I said, I want them to be able to use this too as well. And so without overcomplicating things for them where they don't know how to read market data, they don't know how to do all this kind of stuff, but I want it to be something where the algorithm does all the analysis and then uses the right model in plain words to say, this is what you need to be doing on this day or on this candle, okay? And it would literally just show you what you need to do, all right? And then also taking profits. How can we have a good idea? So part of what this harp line does it's, it looks back in historical data based on this reputable pattern that it sees that, hey, this stock is ready to go up. In the past, it's moved this much, right? And so the upper level of this will show you, hey, somewhere around here, based on historical data of what the stock has done over and over and over in the past, this is where we anticipate that it could move if it keeps up with what it's been doing in the past. And so once we have that idea of where it could go, then now it's just a matter of each candle, each day, each week, depending on you know what time frame we're looking at, is to say, let's just make sure that nothing is derailing the progress as it makes it up to that level. Make sense? And so that's pretty much all we do. Uh, the other thing is, hey, you know, you've heard about a certain stock that is moving. Uh, is it too late to jump into a stock? We know that if at any point in time the price is above these harp lines, then we know it's already too late. Does that make sense? If we already know that it's too late, if price should ever get above that level. Now, if we're already in the trade, no problem. But if it's one of those things where all of a sudden, oh my goodness, look at GameStop has rallied this and you know all these Wall Street bets, people are jumping in. We just simply come and say, where is it in retrospect? Where is it, uh, um, not in retrospect, in relations to this harp line? If it's way above this, we say, you know what, forget about it. Let's move on. Make sense? That's kind of what we do. And then what about when it's too early to buy? Uh, if you guys recall when the, when the pandemic happened in 2000, um, a lot of people were saying buy airline stocks, buy airline stocks. And we said, eh, not so. Part of the reason why was notice what happened here. We were in the red. So the airline stocks, the cruise line stocks, the, 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 the travel industry were already, most of them were already in the red showing that the sentiment was already bearish. So we said, no, we're not necessarily interested in this. And so I remember when uh, uh, as people started flocking into the market and everybody was like, listen to YouTube and everybody was jumping into all these airline companies. We were literally telling people, uh, you might wanna stay away from airline companies. These are not the ones to get into, okay? And part of that reason was because this was happening at that time. It's like, they are not healthy. This is a bearish sentiment in these stocks. Now, some people say, well, just buy it and hold on to it, okay? And you would do well, which is true. But at the same time, there were other stocks out there 
that were showing that they were ready to go. Technology stocks were showing that they were ready to go. I said, wow, we need to be in technology stocks, forget the airline stocks. When they are ready, we will come back to those. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so this is how we knew, look, it's too early to jump into these things. Don't get involved in them. Let's go find something that we can use, okay? And so that's one of, uh, so Jill is asking, do you use 50 SMA uh, or 50 moving average to measure sentiments? No, 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 no. Uh, we don't use the 50 SMA for that at all. Um, but unfortunately I can't reveal what it is, but needless to say it's not, and it's not volume uh, by the way too. It's not volume, nor is it the 50 SMA. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. I just coughed into everybody's ears. This is Bank of America, same exact thing, right? Um, if you were trading this going up, once it turned red, you knew the sentiment was telling you something is wrong, right? Anybody that wanted to buy here, I'm saying, look, just be patient. Let's make sure the sentiment has changed and then see what the right model is telling us before we jump into it. And that's pretty much what we wanna do, okay? When should we sell? Same thing, it either when the right model tells us to sell or the sentiment changes, one of the two, okay? So here's just some of the examples from like, without using the platform, just seeing when we got into certain trades um, at the time, uh, the platform was telling us, hey, this is a stock that is ready to go higher. We're gonna make new all-time highs. Now, it did not predict that it was gonna go up to 450, but it did predict that it was gonna go above the all-time highs, okay? And that's kind of like why we said, wow, now we're finding a stock that we can get into and be willing to stay in. And this is why I said, we don't do day trading. We are more swing traders. I like getting into a trade, staying in for like about anywhere from three weeks to three months. That's typically what we do, three weeks to three months. And again, if that's something that you like, I don't mind staying in a trade for three weeks to three months, man, this would work excellently for you. Okay, here's another example of another stock that again, we saw when we bought this, um, you know, in less than a month and a half, we already reached the all-time highs. Here's Moderna. You guys recall when Moderna was going through his whole thing and everybody was talking about, you know, Pfizer, Moderna, all that kind of stuff. Again, we found this down here. We were able to get to all time highs over and over and over. And this is literally what we did. Uh, here was another company of BioLife Solutions, bought it down here. This one took a little bit longer, about almost the three months full, you know, it took almost the whole three months to get there. But interesting enough, we did this over and over and over. And over again, Tesla was one of our favorite when we did this back in 2019. I remember in December of 2019, and I was like, oh my gosh, we, we, we saw that Tesla, and this was on a monthly chart, by the way, okay? This was on a monthly chart, which told us, oh my gosh, Tesla's about to do some really, really great things, right? And so we saw that there, and it's like, my goodness, we need to get into Tesla. So the question then becomes, first, we knew that we should take out this high. Now, again, even the model did not predict that it was going to go this high. But as time went on, we just kept on managing the trade and saying, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? As it just kept on going higher and higher and higher, which is that area where if you've ever heard people say, uh, ride your winners, cut your losers, that's one of the things that this does. Let me actually show you uh, an example of what I'm talking about here uh, with Tesla. Uh, let me do this. Um, I'm going to go, give me one second. Let me bring up the platform and we'll see. Like, actually, this where we are right now should go to the platform. So here's a platform. And what I did was I just typed in Tesla right now. And what I'm going to do is show you the same thing that we saw on Tesla going back to the platform. Uh, this is the weekly chart. Um, on the left hand side here, you can see, um, you know, just uh, you can pick any one of these time frames based on what time frame you're looking at. We like to look at the weekly and the monthly more than anything else, okay? Uh, what platform does this run on? It's uh, web-based. It's totally web-based. So if you just go to rightsideplatform.com, you'll see it. Uh, you'll need a login and password to get in, but you know, you'll have to subscribe to get in and stuff like that, okay? Uh, but this is Tesla. This is the monthly chart. And so we were looking at the monthly chart of Tesla. Let me, let me see if I can uh, show you this. This is what we saw. Let me just zoom in right here. Okay, so Tesla had been, you know, not doing so well when this started happening, da, 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 right? Now, I want you guys to see, as I'm going to move my cursor, I want you to see, we'll go to each candle. So in this red candle here, you can see it's like exit long positions and place short stops. That's what the right model is saying on this candle back in, 
Oh, that's right here, right? It says exit your long position because it was still bearish. There was no reason why you should be long anything at this point. And then please stop. So when it first turned bullish, when the sentiment started turning bullish, there wasn't enough data to say, yes, this is really going to be sustainable. So you see it still say the same thing, exit your longs and all that kind of stuff. But then notice what it did right here in October. It says, it's now time to buy now. You see the word buy cover. Buy cover just simply means, look, if you're long, it's time to buy. If you were shorting, now why would that be? Because you were already shorting when this was happening down here, right? Like you should have been shorting, you should not be buying. You know, if you were trading it at all, the short shorting would be the proper side to be on, right? But now that it's come over here, it's saying, look, you need to cover your short position now. Again, did it anticipate that it was gonna go all the way up there? Nope, not at all. But right there, it knew not only had the sentiment started changing, but at the same time, it was telling it's time to start buying, okay? Uh, Daniel is asking, do you have a scanner to identify stocks that are about to exit or enter? Yes, that is correct, absolutely, okay? Absolutely, we do. And maybe I'll get to showing you that too as well. Yes, the answer is yes, all right? Uh, that's what this screen is, is right here. So we can do this. Um, I do this every single weekend, okay? But what I, what I want to show you here is the power of this. So here, we saw this and say, wait a second, Tesla should start heading higher. The next month, when November, it said, look, if you want to add to your position, buy more, it's time to buy more. December, buy more. So we were telling people, I say, wow, there's something happening to that Now, now we didn't know what was going on, but again, all the quantitative analysis, all the technical analysis, all the historical data was showing that money is flowing into Tesla. Okay. And then notice what it did right here. It says wait or hold. Now, what does that mean? The right model. And, and when I say, what is it saying? I, I want you guys to be paying attention to what the right model is. I move each, the mouse to each candle, just pay attention to what it's saying. Now you notice it says wait or hold. Okay, so at this stage, what it's basically saying is, look, don't chase it anymore. The wait is, if you are not in it, because this is when the media started talking about Tesla. Oh, my God. This is when people started really hearing about Kathy Woods, okay? And it's like, I mean, Kathy Woods was already talking about Tesla way before this, right? But now this is when people first started hearing about her because it's like, wait a second, this lady just made all this money in Tesla. And we over here say, we too, we too, we too. You know, maybe not as much as she did, but we started looking at this since October and saying, wow, this is going up. And so when Tesla went up, I mean, we were excited. We were in Tesla. We were holding on to it. But at that point in time, it says wait or hold, which is very interesting because it didn't tell us to sell, right? It didn't even tell us the place to stop. It just says, just hold on if you're already in. The wait means that if you're not in, it's too late. Don't try to chase this. But if you're already in, just hold on to your positions. So then the next month, I mean, Tesla did really well and then started selling off. And so this is where people might start getting all scared. Oh my goodness, oh, look at that sell off, it's gonna crash. And literally people were saying that. Um, oh, Tesla's gonna crash, da 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 da, da, da you know, it's gonna go down. All we did was simply come back and says, look, we know what everybody's saying out there, or at least we hear what people are saying, but what is the real data, the quantitative data? What is it telling us? What's the technical data? What's the historical data telling us? Is, that, is there really selling off going on? Now, keep in mind, this was also during the pandemic, right? This was also during the pandemic. So I want you guys to pay attention to see that the background was all green. So it was still a bullish sentiment as opposed to what was happening with airline stocks that were all bearish sentiments during those times. And so this is the reason why I say, uh, I won't necessarily be buying airline stocks. You might want to pay attention to companies like Tesla. And so the next month, notice what it said now for the first time. It says, look, if you're long, let me see if I can clear this. I want you guys to pay attention right here. It says, if you are long, place a stop on your long positions. So this is the first time that is now saying place a stop. That's kind of interesting because again, it wasn't saying sell, but it was saying place a stop because there was still some data that the algorithm was picking up and saying, look, it's not selling off like historically it would do. There's not enough distribution taking place for this to like be sold off, but it's look, we see the price is dropping. So place a stop if you're in this. Now, what did they also say? Is it look, for those who are trying to short, you should not be short in this, is what this was saying at this time. All right. And so then the next month, 
same thing, nothing changed. Look, place your stops. Now, if you place your stop on this candle, your stop would have gone at the low right there. Did you get stopped out the next candle? No, you did. And then over here, same place your stop again. And so again, you can either adjust your stop or leave it where it was, depending on how you want to do this. But again, you would have left it and just place your stop. Now, what it's not telling us to do is go buy. It's not telling us to buy anything. It's not telling us to short it. It's not telling us to just, you know, sit and wait back, but it's, it is telling us place your stops. And oh, by the way, if you short it, get out of your shorts because there's not enough data that's telling us this thing is ready to go down, you know, based on the overall sentiment of this. What happened the very next month? Boom. Now it's telling us it's time to buy. You guys see this? And so people are like, oh my goodness, uh, Tesla, they have so many short positions and people were shorting. I mean, there was a lot of people, you know, uh, trying to look for that, you know, uh, uh, shorts on Tesla. And we were saying, no, it's actually telling us to buy. And then now it says wait and hold. And we just sat back and watched as Tesla just like every month we literally came back, what should we do? And I thought, okay, just hold on to it. And so like when, when we had scary moments like this, it was like, oh my gosh, should we sell? But now here's what I tell people. The people who bought up here are the ones that are probably panicking. Mind you, the guys that bought down here, you think, I mean, when this is happening here, yeah, you might, but we have a lot of room now because we did what we bought right. We have a lot of room to wait, to see what happens. You know, uh, if I even wanted to place a stop, I could have placed a stop right there. But the cool thing was we said, let's wait on what the right model is saying. Anybody, this is when it gave us our buy right here, right? So even if you bought here with all this volatility that was taking place each and every day, we just said, no, no, let's just wait and see. Let's wait and see what it says. And so keep in mind, price is going higher. People are saying, what should we do? And it just kept on going higher and higher and higher. And then over here, we had this red, right? Red candle. And then it started falling back, but it's like, all it's saying is like, you should not be buying. And so anybody who had bought Tesla, you know, the way we look at this back here, is still doing well. And so when I told people, I said, look, I'm not selling my Tesla shares. He's like, are you crazy? Tesla's been dropping. I said, it's all relative because it depends on when you got in. If you got in when we got in, when we got in down here and we got down here, like I'm willing to, you know, until either the sentiment trends, turns bearish, okay? Or the right model tells us to get out, we'll stay in. So what is it telling us today right now? Look at what it's saying right here. This is the first time where it's saying, look, you either need to get insurance, get insured, meaning protect your positions, protect your profits, or if you want to get out of the trade, you can get out now. The first time that is now telling us that since we got that. And so the question now, we have a choice now. We can either sell and keep our profits because it's saying, look, this will be a good time to exit your positions, or we can actually go in there and just get insured. And how do we get insured? We we get insured with what I call the free insurance and the paid insurance, okay? But the free insurance is just placing a stop. Paid insurance is buying put option on this, okay? But where would our stop go? You know, at the low of this candle here, or maybe this one right here. This is what it's telling us to do. Leave them right here, long stop. So again, you would have placed your stop down here. But notice what it's not saying. It's not telling us to short right now. Now I can hear people saying, well, but Wally, you know, I could have shorted from up here and made some money. Yes, you could have. But again, it all depends on how we approach it. Like I said, we are looking to be swing traders slash long-term investors on this. As a long-term investor, I'm going to say there's no reason for you to be selling this. Does that make sense? And this is kind of what this does for us. We talked about ARK investment. A lot of people are questioning, what should we do with ARK investment? What should we, what's going on with ARK investment, right? Which is very interesting because I always tell people, I say, you know, when, when Kathy Wood started, if you ever listen to what Kathy Wood said, she said she plans on being in this for five years, right? But a lot of people only heard about Kathy Woods last year. Now, think about this. Last year, when everybody started hearing about Kathy Woods, she had been investing in these things when it was $20. 20 bucks is when she was invested in these ARC investment type of ETFs. And I mean, she's created some brand new ones since then. But again, you think that she's panicking because, you know, saying the stock went up to 160s, now pulled back all the way down to like, what, 100? 
and she got in at 20. I was like, come on. I said, the only people that are frustrated with her are the ones that try to buy up here. I feel bad for the person that bought up there trying to follow her philosophy. And it's like, no, her philosophy says five years from now. Okay. And the reason why she's not panicking and I'm like looking at this and I say, well, I won't panic either if I was in an ARC investment type of uh, investment is because the overall sentiment is still bullish. And this is where I say we have to, it's relative, you know, overall sentiment is still bullish long term. And I even heard her say something about how she's excited that, that the market is, you know, uh, is, is dropping because what this does is it gives her an opportunity to buy at discounted prices to add more to her positions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the weekly chart because we don't mind going into the weekly chart. Like we, we, we really trade off the weekly and the monthly. And I want you guys to see this right here. Right now on the weekly, which is something I always tell people to every single weekend, I encourage all our subscribers, go to the platform and see what it's telling you to do on the week. Okay. At the very least, check to see what it's saying every single week. Right. And right now, here's what it's saying. It's saying, exit your long positions and place stops on your short. Very interesting choice of words, okay? Why? Number of things that we're seeing here. First of all, the sentiment is still bearish based on the weekly chart. No problem, right? No problem, everything is still bearish. So that basically means that look, the right side to be on is not the long side. You should not be buying this right now. Now, if you're looking at this on a monthly and you owned it, hold on to it. But, or actually it's not even telling you, hold on, it's saying, look, if you want to get out, go ahead and get out. If you want to play some stops, play some stops and put some stops in place, okay? But right now, based on this weekly chart, what it's telling us to do is say, exit your long positions and place stops on your short, which is very interesting because what it did not say was short the stock. It did not say short the stock. It's saying, exit your long positions, meaning that you shouldn't be buying. So this is kind of one of those things where, if you recall on the on the uh, presentation uh, over here, when I said right here, is it too early to buy? That's what this is telling us. It's like it's too early to be buying, to be buying um, uh, Ark Investment right now. But the one thing that I'm beginning to pay attention to is like, look, the fact that it's now telling the bearish people to place stops on their short positions tells me maybe just maybe and this is on a week-to-week -week basis so by the end of this week i would like to see how it develops i want to see what it does next week but i won't be surprised because here's the other thing too look at where it's sitting now a prior you know uh resistance level that has now become support so this is where the whole question is timing the timing is what i want to know and so what i'm now going to do here is i put up this harp line and I want you guys to see this now. This is where this now goes to a whole different level. Because what this is now telling me, if you recall what I said in the beginning, I know that if we can get in below this level right here, we know this is healthy first and foremost. How do we know it's healthy, the H part? We know it's healthy because this heart line is trending higher. So we know this is healthy. Yes, it's going through a pullback. That's a difference in a pullback and a reversal. This is just a pullback is what this is telling us. But the interesting thing is the A, attractive price, we are now seeing things at an attractive level. How do I know it's at an attractive level? Because we're down here, okay? Because we're down here. Now, part of what I didn't mention was the risk management. One of the things we know is like, once we get a buy signal in this level at lower level here, chances are price should not go below this level here because that is the support. So now we're saying, wait a second, we know it's a healthy stock. We are literally in the vicinity of an attractive price, right? We know where our risk is. Now the only question is, can we really make some good money off of this? Which is something I always tell people too. You gotta make sure you know how much profit you're gonna make. So if we get in somewhere around here, up to here, we don't wanna pass this pink line, then our profit potential is Based on historical data, this is how high we can expect it to go if we get it by signal. We haven't got it yet, but this is as high it can go, somewhere around 152. 
Okay, now that doesn't really make it all time highs, but it's so close to that. And usually sometimes it might just even take that out. So the way I'll be looking at this is as soon as we get a buy signal, which I don't know when, it might be this week, it might be next week, it might be two weeks from now. But by golly, we are beginning to watch this and say, once we get our signal saying that it's time to buy, which the right model will tell us, then we know our profit uh, target should be somewhere between the 152 and 160. And then now you can even tell, hey, here's how much money I'm going to make off of this trade. And if you like those profit potential, you trade it. If not, you don't have to worry about it. But here's the thing. We don't have to guess. We literally don't have to guess. We know that this is getting ready to do something. We just don't know where it's going to be this week, next week, two weeks from now. But whenever it happens, we'll be ready. And then the beauty of it is, as this told us to hold on, hold on, it would tell us the same thing until we either get up here and we see that it turns red. Once the sentiment turns red, even though it's saying get insured or get out, the fact that the sentiment turns red means that we need to be like taking profits. Make sense? I talked about screeners. Let me show you this. This is our screening. Oh, and I haven't even shown you the seasonality because that's another thing we can do is say, look, when we see certain stocks, what's the seasonal pattern for that particular stock in the next six months, which is really cool, but I'm not going to go into that. We don't have that much time. I'm beginning to actually run out of time. Um, here's what we're talking about here. You know, I can go to buy cover. Personally, I like going to the weekly chart. So this is what I do. But again, if you want to go daily, the monthly, whichever one, I like going to weekly chart. I hit get results. Okay. What that then does is like it populates a bunch of stocks that is telling us, look, these things are getting ready to buy. Now, personally, you can also go in here, you know that this is based on the NASDAQ, these are chains. We can go over here, we can type in New York Stock Exchange if we wanted to, and you'll see all these. These are stocks that are beginning to show up on a weekly basis that is saying, get ready, right? We can also sort by volume and say, which one has the most volume? See, these ones have no volumes while this one's haven't shown us a whole lot of volumes. We have American exchange, okay, which is usually where most of the ETS are lying. So that's another way we actually go about doing this. Like we, I like to go through, let me see what ETS are beginning to show that there's signs that something is about to happen. Okay. And then it's like, why? And why is this important? Because once we know the ETF is doing something, we can then say, what are the stocks in those ETS? Because that's how we start finding the gems that nobody is talking about. Does that make sense? So we can go back to NASDAQ again and say, hey, um, here's NASDAQ. We have NYSC. Uh, for those of you who might be in Canada, we have the Toronto Stock Exchange on here too as well. Okay. But again, NASDAQ, Toronto Stock Exchange, all that kind of stuff. And then it tells us down here how many stocks right now, based on the weekly chart, is shown that, you know what? It's shown it by signal. 464 stocks right now are shown by signal. Are you surprised that technology stocks are doing pretty well right now? Airlines are beginning to do something. I'm not sure who this company is. Energy stocks are beginning to do something here, right? So all this stuff, let's just go to one of these, the, the energy one. I can just click on that. What I did was I just went here and I just opened the chart, okay? <laughs> and then what that would do is it will bring up the chart itself and then we can see what is it doing, okay? Usually when you open up the chart, the first place it would default to is a daily chart. So I come here and I say, look, I want the weekly. Why do I want the weekly? Because the scan is based off the weekly. Does that make sense? And so we go over here and we say, look, we want the weekly chart. Show us what is showing, what, what is it doing on the weekly chart? Here's what the weekly chart of this energy stock is doing. Interesting enough, this is going higher. So now I want to say, look, are we too late? Is it too early? Well, we know it's not too early, one, because this section is now green. So we know that the sentiment is bullish. So that's good. But I can come here and put on the harp line and then come here and say, what is it telling us to do? Notice the same by heart. Notice what it's done. Back here, it was saying, let's wait and see. This is the first time it gave us a buy cover. So anybody who had seen this back in May would have been buying this secretly, waiting for it. Notice what it said right here, look, long stop. It didn't say sell it. So even with volatility, it's, it factors those things in. It said like, I know, I mean, it's just reasonable to expect volatility to drop at some point in time, right? 
and then buy cover, buy cover, buy cover. All this right here, we had one, two, three, four weeks to be buying this stock. And what is anticipated is like expected to go to $3.81 to as high as $4.84. Wow. That's all we got to do. And we monitor this every week. If something happens, we get out. Make sense? All right. So I'm running out of time. Let me just do this. Um, if you have questions, by all means, please ask. My offer to you guys today is, you know, if you go to the site, rightsidetrading.com forward slash uh, pack, um, you can get this for the next, what, three months, which is 90 days. What I'll do is I'll give you access to the platform, which, you know, is web-based, so you don't need to download anything at all. You just log in, uh, you get a password, uh, 90 days. I'm also going to give you 90 days of my right side report, and you get to attend our weekly webinars where we actually go into these, you know, analysis every single week to see what you will join some of our other subscribers and some of our students and some of them even bring stocks that I don't even see. Right. And we just analyze them and say, which stocks. The, the, the coolest thing is that we do not chase stocks that have already made it. We want to get into the stocks that are going to make it. So like right now, one of the biggest things we're doing is what are the stocks that are going to get us the type of profits we're looking for, for the third quarter. Most people don't think that far ahead. Right. But that's also what we do. We want to buy before it gets there. You know what I'm saying? So if people come to us and say, oh man, did you hear what happened to MSC? It, it jumped up today. It's like, unless we were already in two weeks ago, a week ago, before the jump moved, we're not interested in that. What we are interested in is finding the setups. That to us is more important than chasing the results, the setup, okay? And so let me just show you this. This is the right side report. Let me just spend the last you know, four or five minutes talking about the right side report, because every week I write a report where I kind of, you know, talk about the market, what we've seen in the market, what the platform is telling us, what the model is telling us. We, we, we talk about all that so that we have a good idea for this. Uh, does the setup good for options trading? Oh my gosh. Um, I wish, yes. The answer is yes, Vic. I, I, now it doesn't tell you which options to buy, but um, when you come to the weekly webinars, I'll, I'll show you because we talk about that all the time now. Um, how we, you know, use options on some of this, on, of some of these trades and stuff like that. Okay, so yes, the answer is yes. Um, but I've ran out of time. I wish I could show you that. Maybe I spent too much time talking on one thing and I should have moved on. But if you come to the weekly webinars, we'll show you how you can use this also with options. Okay. Um, the right side report I write this week every week. I physically write this myself. And part of the reason is because I want people to see what's going on. And, and part of that is so we don't get persuaded by what everybody else is saying out there. We want to see what the true data is saying. Um, if you notice the, the date of this report, January 24, 2020, this is when we started seeing based on the platform is saying, wait a second, something, the market is in unison. We need to be ready for either a slowdown at best or a reversal is worse. Now, why is this important? Because all this started showing up before the pandemic happened. Right. Notice what we said. The writing is already on the wall. That is so, you know, like, I don't know how much more convincing that it, it is time to take part. We didn't say maybe we should take profits or maybe we should. It's like it is time to take profit. It is time to exit our position. The market is wanting us to take heat. Now, did we know it was going to be as severe as the pandemic? No, we did not. But we saw so many things saying, wait a second, this is not right. We need to be getting out of everything, okay? That was on the 24th, the market dropped following that. I was like, oh my God, that's what the quantitative and, qu quant uh, qu quantitative and technical analysis was all showing us, right? Then in March, on March 27th, after everybody's like losing their jobs, unemployment rate is going through the roof and everything, on the 27th, that weekend, we said, the question is, have we found the bottom or is this just a relief rally? The answer, the market is communicating that it is time to cover all, not some, all short position. Hey, Teddy, I didn't know you were on the call. <laughs> Welcome. All short positions. Exit your shorts and get ready for a rally. Hey, you know, that this is on the 27th. So this is what... What was so interesting was like during this whole time, there were people saying, oh yeah, it's just a bear market rally. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is not a bear market rally. The data is showing that things are ready to go higher. 
uh, more recently this year, if you notice what happened in the, in the technology sector, we were telling people back in February, same thing, place your stop or get out is what this was telling us. So it's like, place your stops, the uh, in, investors, the NASDAQ is suggesting investors should pro, uh, protect their positions by placing stops or exiting their trades in the NASDAQ. What ended up happening, NASDAQ dropped. On April 1st, same things. Look, there's a time for everything. After six weeks of downbeat pressure, we see that tech stocks have now put in a bottom. The time to plant tech stock seeds is now. Why? Because the platform was telling us it's time to buy. Next thing you know, tech stocks went to all time high. Then a few weeks later, we had this again. Wait a second. The right model is now suggesting get out of our tech stocks. Okay. And what happened to tech stocks? They've been dropping since then. And then literally just not too long ago, like literally two weeks ago, it's beginning to show another bottoming pattern, but we don't have a buy signal yet. So be patient. We need to be looking for the buy signal, right? We knew something was changing simply because this was green, but we knew that we had not got our buy signal. So we said, look, for now, data suggests it is better to either stay out or get insurance, but investors should be looking for any potential buy signal this week. Okay, any potential buy signal this week, that's what it kind of gave us. And then next thing you know, it starts heading higher. This last week, we wrote to our subscribers again, the bottoming pattern in the QQQ is still playing out. Last week, we said that the right model is not suggesting a buy signal yet, and we would be looking for a buy signal, we now have this buy signal. If you go look and see what's been happening to tech stocks now, what have they been doing? They've been getting to slowly but surely come back, which tells us we need to pay attention to ARK investment, which tells us we need to pay attention to stocks like NEO, which tells us we need to pay attention to stocks like Apple. What are these stocks like Microsoft, Facebook? Why are these stocks beginning to show signs that they're getting ready to do something? Because we're beginning to see this. There's no guessing here, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So that's it. 597, uh, come test it out for three months. Um, you know, if you come to the webinar, uh, when you come to the webinar, if you can attend the webinar live, we would actually have the recordings available for those who can attend live, okay? Uh, you can ask questions by sending us emails, um, by attending it, but go to this site right here, ladies and gentlemen, rightsidetrading.com forward slash path, and watch how this model literally Every single week, every single day, every single month, you want to know what's going on. There's no guessing. We always tell people there's no guessing, hoping, or wishing. I hope that this really helps you. Try it out. See what it can do for you. Thank you guys so much for letting us be on the call, Dave. I uh, appreciate it. And Anka, um, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you because I know that my time is up.